This episode of Weed and Grub is brought to you by Quinn. Quinn is an all-cannabinoid brand that offers real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. How do they do that? Well, that's how you read it, right? How do they do that? Yeah. How, yeah. It's like rhetorical. How, the, do they, how, do, how do they do that? Previous Quinn ad reads? Mm-hmm. I, I would ask it like <laughs> I was asking myself and then answering myself because I didn't understand your how, copy. How do they do how that? How do they do that? <laughs> How do they do that? How do they do that? Well, well <laughs> that's how you do it. Okay. So Quinn, well, they can do it because their THC products are all extracted from hemp. That's right. That's how they do that. <laughs> all their products are third party tested and they use pure clean ingredients to give you a quality buzz. Check out Quinn online and use our promo code weed and grub at checkout to get 25% off your next order. Visit myquin.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use code weed and grub at checkout to get 25% off Quinn's edibles vapes, concentrates, and more. How do they do that? How do they do that? Oh, it's because you can get it legally in all 50 states and use our code. 25% off is a good deal, too. I know. It's a great deal. Oh, that's how they do that. Quinn. Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. I feel amazing. I feel absolutely fantastic. I was trying to think of how to start this one because we recorded our chat with Reggie before this intro. And so I'm I'm microdosed up right now. Uh-huh. But in the interview, it's almost like pulp or no reservoir dogs. This is like a reservoir dog situation. Oh, yeah. I thought you were gonna say memento, but I know what you mean. All the things. Yes. All the memories. It's, it's all reverse. The we're yeah. high now from something that you're gonna hear in a minute. And now. And now. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> yeah. These and capsules... past me is real happy with now me. That's great. Yeah. Past you being happy with present you. Yeah. And future you, as far as I can tell. My future self is very happy about this moment. Oh, is it rubbing its hands together? Yep. Like, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're going to have a great Jane. day. How's it going, Mike? I mean, it's great. Yes. It is a great day. It is a great day. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a... Uh, and mushrooms. Uh-huh. Welcome to Weed and Grub and Mushrooms, everyone. <laughs> this is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Mushrooms. Culture. Cooking. And... Wait, you did it. And weird. calling shit out. Oh, I was going to say mushrooms at the end. Uh, Comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And? Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's great. Uh, I was talking with Mary. Um, carry on. Carry on. Uh, as this episode, or as we were walking out to get pictures, mm-hmm. and because there's lion's mane in the capsules we took, mm-hmm. I didn't know that those are um, focus forward. I didn't either. I I had never learned that. So like I was kind of nervous about recording the rest of the day because I I didn't want to just be like a a giggly mess uh, the whole time. But the idea that there is a mushroom out there that can make me feel like this and help me with the focus I need to do a day the way I want to do a day. Yeah. Man, that's a blessing. It truly is. You know, when we were chatting with Reggie and he was saying that, you know, for a long time he was taking... um, Adderall to focus and that then he found the that mushrooms worked that just I I was so heartened to hear that because I have used microdose mushrooms like to sort of get out of some like mental ruts that I've been in and so on but I've never used it as a sort of like a focusing working substance and I feel so good right now and I really do I feel very present in an awesome way I feel like I'm very aware of all my skin cool you know even the webs what webs? Like the fing- the, the between have, the fings. I don't have webbed fingers. <laughs> That's not what I, mean. I know about your joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did date a girl who had webbed toes. Yeah. And I dumped her because of it. Mike. I we- had to. I had to. <laughs> like genetically, mm-hmm. genetically, like I think that we are we are here to reproduce and have a great time while we do it. Absolutely. And I know I'm never going to have kids, but mm-hmm. I also know I don't, I don't want to mix with that DNA. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? terrible it's not though i think that's reasonable <laughs> like there's no like th- that shouldn't be around anymore and what was your joke about when she would paint her toenails oh it looked like a, a fin with baby teeth because she painted her toenails white painted her toenails white <laughs> <laughs> wow Woo. you gotta go you gotta you gotta Sorry. do it well these mushrooms are great <laughs> <laughs> i think that brings us to our news story oh yeah let's get to the news the grubla gazette which in honor of our guest and of today is a psychedelic story and it's from the bbc and it's about a um study that shows that psychedelics free up the depressed brain i'll tell you what as somebody who has a clinically depressed brain yep 
pretty untangled right now. Yeah, I That's have a, awesome. I have a diagnosis of PTSD, and I feel uh, zero anxiety right now. It's nice. fucking awesome. Um, so I'll just read a little bit. It says psilocybin, a drug found in magic mushrooms, which we know appears to free up the brain of people with severe depression in a way that other antidepressants do not, a study has found. It was based on brain, brain scans of 60 people, and um, it... Uh, the findings were called by the study author uh, exciting and important because it's, uh, you know, could change the world with this, you know, medicine that may be available at some point. But as we talked to Reggie as well, like, you know, legalization is a tricky thing. So And, and grassroots, like getting yeah. out there, shouting it out, like throwing an event that will bring a community to, together. Yep. I feel like 60 scans is enough though to get like a, a solid That's ratio a of like people. Like yeah. people, we're all this, we're all the same. So <laughs> the idea that you can see um, the illumination of six out of 60 of those and make like a, a case for scientific backing on why yeah. mushrooms rock, I'm all about that. Yeah, I mean, obviously m millions more studies to come, but it's you know great that they're starting to do this and talk about it in mainstream media, that this is no longer a sort of a fringe science, that people are really paying attention, you know, largely I think because corporations are paying attention and, yeah. you know, we get into that as well. But, you know, whatever whatever it takes to get the message out and that maybe- I don't help, agree with that. Help people whatever understand. Takes, not yeah, whatever Well, not whatever it takes. it takes, but like, you know, we, we want more people to understand that they have plant medicine alternatives. That's just, you know, that's that's all we really want. Right. Uh, right. I think, you know, well, we'll also to have a great time. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I oscillate between being really highfalutin and being like, we're going to change the world. And I do believe that we can change the world and the world is changing because of uh, people who work hard and stand by what they believe in. Yeah. But um, also, I, I'm finding that my threshold for what I'm willing to do to make that change is, is starting to change as legalization of everything comes forward like i'm starting to i'm starting to be a little bit cagey about um things getting into the mainstream media yeah you know right like, i'm all about like yeah we got to get the message out there but also like kind of fuck the mainstream media like what are <laughs> we talking about we were talking before this about how pharmaceutical commercials are on tv here and they're not anywhere else in the world right like, like yeah yeah we were talking fuck? about this on the way here that, yeah. that uh it was i actually saw a tiktok of a girl who i think she was dutch and she was visiting the u.s and she was like hey everyone i just want to give you a little context the amount of drug commercials that you have on your tv is fucking insane and doesn't happen in my country and i was like that's right i i've forgotten living in a country where that doesn't that's not the fucking yeah. norm. It's the big farmers constantly advertising mm -hmm. to you. Do your knees knock and sometimes you itch? <laughs> yeah. Do, do, does your leg twitch at night? Mm -hmm. Then you have RLS. If you blink between 64 and 100 times per <laughs> hour, you might need this pill. So count your blinks. <laughs> Make sure you're not blinking between this range. Oh, my God. You totally. Which yeah. also, I love that it's Dutch because that ties right into our chat with Reggie. Off yep. jump. That's awesome. Yeah. Love these connections, mushrooms. The Dutch are enlightened people, largely, <laughs> but there's also a right wing and fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> if you were making hit singles, I love that like the chorus would be this banger and then underneath it would be this voice that's like, actually, there are <laughs> quite a few problems with this. Here's a it depressing fact. <laughs> Did we say that you were going to release the comedy album and I get the B side and it's just correcting all of your jokes with facts? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Actually, uh, tilapia isn't the Michael Sarah of the sea. Hi, this is Mary Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to tell you why Mike's joke is factually incorrect and, <laughs> and I'm not funny about it. Uh, uh But I think that would actually put it on the billboard charts. Right. We should do this. This, yeah. this might be a sleeper hit. I, it would be like when William Shatner did that fucking spoken word word album. Never heard it. Never will. It's great. He does Hey Mr. Tambourine Man. All right. Now I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Holy shit. Are we getting to Buds of the Week? We should get to the Buds of the Week. Okay. You go first. My please. Bud of the Week. I mean, they've been guests. They've been buds. But um, I feel closer to this guy now because of a great hang. My Bud of the Week from Bad Manners, Matt Holloway. Um Follow at Bad Manners. Get their newest book, Brave New World. Um, it's it's really cool when you meet somebody on a podcast like this or like their podcast, Bad Manners. And then all of a sudden, Matt made the offer and Olive Branch to reach out. And he's like, you want to come see my boat? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he bought a boat. And I'm not going to talk too much about like the money side. But have you ever seen like a fixer upper reality TV show where they walk into this dump covered in mold and the paint is flaking off? And then they do that swipe screen. And then all of a sudden, it's this glistening, beautiful body of work. Hell yes. And that's what Matt did with this boat. It is fucking gorgeous and he invited me on it 
just drinking beers, smoking weed, listening to music, chatting, getting to know each other. And uh, it's been a long time since I've been able to do that. It's been a long time since I've been in the summer sun. It's been a long time since I've jumped in the ice cold water that takes your breath away. And uh, to be able to do it with a new friend like Matt makes it my butt of the week. I think that's the greatest butt of the week you've ever had. Thank you. That was like loquacious and beautifully descriptive. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Fucking A. Um, my butt of the week is Mary Carrion. Mary is on Instagram at Mary Stardust and Mary has three Y's. She introduced us to our guest today and she's a fucking incredible journalist. Uh, She's been on the podcast. Go and check out our episode with Mary. She uh, just reported an amazing story for KCRW about the collapse of the California cannabis industry. And uh, it's a great list and go check it out. It's on uh, KCRW.com. And, um, you know, it's just really uh, like a snapshot of what is happening right now at every level in the industry and why um and she's just dope and she's really cool and she's got great style yeah she does have really cool style yeah she's like man cool damn she's like annoyingly cool no. <laughs> <laughs> what my, a turn my butt of the week that i'm jealous of <laughs> <laughs> what a turn oh man well like let's get to our vib or our um v i m m b m b very important mushroom bud that's right heck yeah <laughs> reggie uh, so Reggie is the founder of Oakland Hyphae and Hyphae Labs. Uh, Reggie Harris is the founder of that event I just mentioned, a community organizer and a mushroom activist who lives in Oakland. His mission is to spread knowledge and education about psychedelics and mushrooms to people in inner cities and POC who have mostly been left out of the Western psychedelic movement. He works closely with decriminalized nature and also is also the founder of Hyphae Labs, a psilocybin mushroom potency testing business. Reggie and his business partner also founded a separate event called the Psilocybin Cup, which which is an event designed around mushroom potency testing. Yo, in the link in the show notes, so many events. The LA yep. event sounds fire. Yep, that's on April 23rd and 24th. And um, I mean, honestly, just follow Reggie on Instagram to see everything that Oakland Hyphae gets up to because they are the, you know, the forefront of the movement. And this was a fucking cool hang. And he brought us beautiful gifts. And, and uh, I feel wonderful. Yeah, natural born leader with something to say who is also saying it in a way that people can hear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fucking A. Fucking A. Uh, so hope you all are having beautiful days. Um, I'm feeling like it's a beautiful day. Yeah. It is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Cool. Mary Jane, thanks for doing this pod with me. Thank you, Mike. I really enjoy doing it. Mark, thanks for doing this pod with me. Thumbs up. Top Tree <laughs> Studios. Heck yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, here's our interview with... Reggie Harris. Mike, I know you love a good buzz. I am a good buzz. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And if you're on the road doing comedy, maybe you're wondering uh, what you can bring when you're traveling to a state where cannabis isn't legal anymore. You might think there aren't a lot of options. I didn't think there were a lot of options. And honestly, it is very frustrating to be on the road and go to a state that doesn't have legalization. And I don't, I'm not, I don't want to get in trouble, but I want something like Quinn. You know, and Quinn is a great option for anybody. Yeah. Quinn is an alt cannabinoid brand that is selling real THC products, everything from edibles to vapes, and they ship to all 50 states. How do they do that? Well, I'll tell you, they have THC products that are oil extracted from hemp. All extracted. All extracted from hemp. (laughs) It's amazing. All of them are third party tested and they only use the cleanest ingredients to give you a quality high. A must try is their extra potent 200 milligram Delta 9 Scissorup. It's the THC we all know and love, but it's legal in all 50 states. Because it's derived from hemp. And you can use our coupon code to get 25% off your next order. Just type in Weed and Grub at checkout. Type it in. Use your thumbs. I think that you're going to probably use an index finger for the W. Go to myquin.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com and use promo code weed and grub for 25 percent off if you live in one of the 50 states get some quinn get some quinn all right (laughs) yeah so we introduced you in the intro by name so let's just jump right into this spliff oh (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah what is the story behind this beautiful perfect role you just did so yeah i pride myself on my ability to roll uh joints i went so this is actually a perfect introduction story for for me here um i if you hear like my story, I talk about having worked with some of the largest mushroom cultivators in the world over in Holland. And so I went, I I was living in DC and I moved, well, I was in college, but between Florida and DC and I left college to go to Holland to, to go fuck with the mushroom people. And I took a 50 box of Dutch masters over there. Cause that's what I, that's what I smoke. And I'm like, all right, Holland, Dutch, I should be good, but I'm taking 50 of these. And um, lo and behold, they don't sell 
um, Dutch masters in Holland. And so, you know, after I ran out of my 50 box, this is what they, they rolled. They, these, these rolls is what they use. No way. Yeah. And so, you know, if I, I had access to all the, all the weed I wanted, but it's <laughs> like, they got tired of rolling. Cause I, I'm a grown man asking these people to roll me my joints every time. Yeah, that's like asking someone to tie your shoes when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. yes, yes. Truly. As an as an as an adult, as a smoker, it's like, come on, you can't roll your own fucking. All right, a time a time or two, you know, or yep. like if we're dating, it it makes sense. But like, it, but even then, I showed my girlfriends how to roll J's, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyway, it came to a point where I'm like, I can't look another man in his eye and ask. Him. <laughs> And ask him to roll my J's anymore just felt nasty. And so I started watching how they do it and like trial and error. You fuck it up, you know, uh, but you smoke whatever you fuck up mm -hmm. or or you don't smoke at all until you learn. And so this is how we got here. They don't sell Dutch masters in Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Harris, master <laughs> spliff and joint roller. Thank you. Hell yeah. I'm very Mushroom master as well. And psychedelic activist. I mean, yeah, when when our friend Mary Carrion, uh, thanks Mary. Shout out to Mary. Hey, just say us. hi real quick. Yell. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> connected us. Uh, she was like, you've got to have him on the pod. You know, you're a psychedelic activist, community organizer. You're educating people. Like, it was just such a perfect connection because that's exactly what we want to know about all the time and we're always trying to answer these questions and we just you know we don't often know where to look yeah. so like yeah. i usually look to big corporations like walgreens <laughs> um amazon <laughs> uh, target i think target has a mushroom aisle now right yeah dog but for real yeah, yeah so kind of 7-eleven right? is selling mushrooms no now way. Yeah. Yeah, dog. what oh my yeah. gosh really yeah. like adaptogenic yeah. capsules yes Yes, Whoa. I'm just hoping that some of the companies I work with, shout out to Microboost. I'm hoping that Microboost gets uh, gets their stuff in 7-Eleven instead of folks that we don't know. But yeah, they're everywhere. So can you just like start us off by telling us like the beginning of your journey? Was it when you moved to Amsterdam to work with nah, my colleagues? No, or? I was selling mushrooms for uh, since like 10th grade. There was an Eminem song that said, I never meant to give you mushrooms, girl. You remember that song? Bring you in my world. world. And now I'm sitting in, in the corner, corner crying. And now, and now it's, it's my, my fault, my fault. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And so it set me <laughs> off onto a path of like trying to figure the mushroom out. And I found the mushroom. And my first journey said, yo, sell the mushrooms. <laughs> so, so I started selling the mushrooms. And, um, you know, that through high school into college. Um, and then I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm doing these college things, but like I'm doing way better with the mushroom. So I might as well go. And so I went, that's what took me to Europe. The law changed over there. So at that, at that time, um, you could, you could still like go into a smart shop and buy like mushrooms. So the people I was working for was putting mushrooms in stores all throughout Europe. And, um, I actually, well, that's too much, but actually so the rule this was like psilocybin mushrooms throughout europe in different countries so throughout the eu the way it worked was when the eu formed so i was this was like during the beginning of when the eu formed is like currency when they when they started currency when i first started france had the franc um uh i think italy had the lira mm -hmm. and then the, the eu came and the the euro came and so within that trade agreement, the rule was if something is viewed as a foodstuff in one of the EU countries, it has to be able to be sold and traded freely in all of the EU countries. Wow. And so in Holland, which was an EU country, the fucking the mushroom was a food. Therefore, by way of the treaty, it could be sold throughout Europe. And it was a huge point of contention. Yeah. Because the politicians weren't making money off of it and that was a problem for that was the contention like it was a government contention it, well clearly that and uh, some some religious stuff but oh like, sure yeah yeah you yeah. know of course <laughs> yeah but generally like if you pay the state you pay in the church so you know it comes back to you not getting the the politicians not getting the money and, and the culture in Holland is not reflected in a lot of the other countries that you mentioned, like France or Italy, or those are pretty conservative as far as psychedelics are concerned, is my understanding, right? Absolutely. Yeah. One of the, the first countries that come to mind that gave one of the biggest pushbacks was Italy. 
Right. Really? Yeah. Is doesn't the Pope live there? <laughs> yeah, and that guy's so, a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's like so close to God. He's like one mushroom away from like really touching base. <laughs> and he, uh, the, the the Pope was the people that was the was the person that brought us the mushroom. Let them tell it, you know. And I, I actually, it, it's I do feel like again they have a reason not to want people to really have the mushroom. You have a whole country. You have a whole country that is yours the vatican you know and it's prime property in the middle of fucking rome like yeah uh i would i wouldn't want people to have access to something that open their mind up to thinking you know maybe this dude didn't or maybe if the dude did die and come back after three days it might be me more metaphorical than <laughs> literal yeah, yeah definitely yeah i feel like psychedelics don't go with doctrine very well uh you know like that's not not <laughs> not man-made doctrine yeah you know it's funny when people get into the mushrooms we all have this when we have your journey people all feel closer to god but like that's on their on their own mm -hmm. that's the relationship they have with the medicine that's not anybody else facilitating it and sometimes people feel more comfortable in group settings with people facilitated but like nah that for me I've been fucking with mushrooms for over 20 years and I never sat in one of these fucking group ceremonies. I won't because I have my own relationship with God through the mushroom. Mm -hmm. Do you have a type of journey that you like to take yourself over all others or are you just open to what the day is bringing your way? Shit. Uh, depends. Today I was open for what the, the day brought. Cool. So I just, I just took a 300 milligram microdose and the day is coming, coming quite nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it feels good. Um, but if I'm trying to do some of the, I, I hate when people say the work, I fucking work, but you know, if you want to do the inner work or whatever that you want to talk about, or you have a decision that you need to make, or th then I'll take it up and I'll, you know, take three and a half grams four grams um but even for me the way i do that is alone i make sure i have you know a bunch of jays already rolled i might want food i might not have food, but i want to have access to everything that i'm gonna need to have comfortable the music mm -hmm. uh and then that's like that's my personal process for for that and so to do a to answer your question to do a larger dose for me is more structured but to do a micro dose is, you know, we can, I could do a micro dose and sit here and talk to you all day. Mm -hmm. I could talk to you all day too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not microed yet. I know it might be coming. Take, you, know, you should take some micro. I brought y'all some micro doses. I brought, so uh, a friend made these. These are micro dose soft gels. These have uh, a very, very special blend of uh, albino penis envy. Mm. Um, grown from a, a craft grower that I know. I did not cultivate these. Before we go further than that, I've never heard of albino penis envy, and at first I thought you were making a joke, but now I'm learning that's like a name of a mushroom, or it's a joke. Yeah, it's I don't both. know. It's both. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, it's a mute. So albino penis envy is a very coveted type of mushroom, and the reason it looks that way is because it does look like a mu like it comes off looking like a penis. Look yeah, yeah. Look cool. it does look like a penis. It, it's a very distinct. It has a like a thick shaft, and then it almost looks like a circumcised penis at the top but um and they're they're white sometimes blue at the top but the good thing the interesting thing about these particular mushrooms is that through so i haven't really talked about what the fuck i do but we have a company called hyphae labs where we uh run the psilocybin cup uh and we we own one of the only potency testing companies in uh mushroom potency testing companies in the country and through the research that my partner uh, ian bollinger does we we have theories of why we've developed theories as to why albino penis envies are more potent. And one of the reasons is that they don't drop spores. Al albino penis envy is a mutation of a uh, certain type of cubensi mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Typically, when most mushrooms grow, when they reach full maturity, they drop spores. And we're, we theorize that generally the ones that drop spores that are of cubensi variety typically are less potent than the cubensi varieties that... Um, that don't drop spores mm -hmm. like enigma like albino penis envy like penis envy so did you say that albino penis envy is a mutation yeah. it's like a yeah does it not look like a little penis <laughs> it looks like a fat looks yeah. like my mm. <laughs> <laughs> familiar <Yeah>. mike <laughs> <laughs> you know there but people love them i love to grow them but they're um they're very difficult to grow they take twice as long sometimes to grow 
the yield oftentimes isn't really, really um, as robust as most people would like. However, I do know a grower, homegirl, she grows, they, they can fucking bang some fucking tubs. And uh, so there are certain people who really know what they're doing, who can get their arms around albino penis envies. But myself, I could, I did it for fun, didn't do, do it for money, you know? Is it comparable at all to growing cannabis when you hybridize different Culti- you know, cultivars to get a strain. Is that the s- same thing with mushrooms that you can actually sort of work towards hybridizing so types? I'm going to speak very generally because I'm starting to get out of my depth and I don't want to speak incorrectly. I know that it is not as easy to, because I try to get into genetics and it's just not as easy to manipulate mushroom genetics um, as it is cannabis like you have to have microscopes and you there's 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 like you you microscopic males and microscopic females that you have to plug in otherwise Mm -hmm. you can do what i call the shotgun approach and that's what i always did you get a bunch of spores together you you shoot them out into a plate and or 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 into a liquid culture and you hope that like two uh two hyphae meet up so that then you can have some sort of um, uh, new creation. Generally, that doesn't happen. Um, and so, but but there are people who are getting better than I ever was mm-hmm. that have more of a mastery. So I say all this to say the way that most people get to a mutation now isn't through necessarily um, breeding. It's through the way that they make their um, the isolations. So what you can do is t- similar to the way it works in cannabis where you can take tissue and make clone. You can take tissue from a mushroom and make a clone with uh, uh, with what we call an agar plate. And you take a piece of the mushroom tissue and you put it on there and um, it grows out these 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 mycelial threads. And it's, it's actually so if you're at all interested in this, we're going to have uh, some of the best agar, what I call agar artists, because I love that part of genetics um, and it's artwork. What we're going to have the first ever um uh, Battle of the Agar taking place at the Salisabin Cup, or I'm sorry, at the uh, California Psychedelic Conference that's going to be uh, here in L.A. on the 23rd and 24th of of, uh, of April. And there's going to be gentle, gentlemen and women bringing, uh, and anybody in between, uh, bringing um, some of their best work and putting it on display. And so if you're at all interested in that, yeah. you'll see some of that shit in person. Wow, that sounds fascinating. So when you say that it grows out mycelial threads, it doesn't grow mushrooms. It grows like, it sounds like I'm it's, imagining some kind of like it, flossy. So, so imagine like um, a bicycle. Yeah. And imagine how the spokes go out. Mm-hmm. So you have an agar plate and you put the, the tissue in the center. And what grows out from the center on the agar is just like bicycle spokes. These beautiful threads that grow out in different patterns. Um, right now, what we, what most people be- view as beautiful is a type of growth called rhizomorphic growth, which is just strong lines. It's like spider webs, but also there's something called tomatose growth, which is, um, cloudy and fluffy. Um, I don't necessarily know that that's bad, but right now, just because, I mean, we've been underground so long, it's just not desirable. I think that we still need to research the tomatose anyway. And these are consumable? So there are people right now who are who do eat their um their agar plates. They do contain mycelium. Therefore, they, I mean, they do con- they have mycelium. Therefore, they contain psilocybin. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, <laughs> good but, to know. But because I'll do. Eat, I'll put anything in my mouth if it looks pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if it looks cool, it's going in. <laughs> oh no, that guy ate all the agar plates again, Mike. <laughs> Look at me, and there's just strings coming off my face. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be high as fuck, and somebody would be so pissed at you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really sensitive to everything, everything. But I mean, if I'm gonna be in your presence, I would love to take a nibble of something sparkly if that's possible i want i want y'all to i want cool because i know we i we ig we dm'd we ig'd about it and so now we've got it we have it locked the truth is the truth if i say it's locked in the truth is the motherfucking truth yes this is the first on this pod i I, what i brought here is is gifts i made these micro doses myself this is what i took is 300 milligrams uh mix of lion's mane and magic uh this is a very special mushroom um that is not domestically located, not domestically sourced, um, but it's famous. It's called Camburger. It's hard to find. 
and I can't find any more of it right now. So that's what this is. Wow. wow. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> These are uh, albino penis envies. Um, apparently, they were gifted to me from a person that I saw right before I came here. Uh, but I know exactly the source that the uh, that the mushrooms came from. And uh, the reports are that these are the most potent batch of uh, of apes that they have. So if I were you, I, if you want a micro, I'd go here. Or there's a friend of mine in Oakland. They have this brand over here. These chocolates are two gram chocolates. And, uh, you know, I'd say bust one of those open. And uh, I know that the the chocolate is sourced from Ghana. I know that much. Um, and I, I know that they're high quality products. They say small batch, so they're handmade. But any of this, man, I'd love for us to get into. And I think yeah. it would make a very interesting, memorable show. Yeah, I mean, I mean more... we're only recording four more hours after this, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it would be a real honor if I could try the... Um... I'd like to as well. This is magic. That's magic, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can, if I try one of these, I'll be good to go. You'll be just like me. I, I want to be just yeah. like you. Thank yeah. you. It's a real honor to, to like, thank you for bringing all of this to Thank too. you so much. Um, I, I, a lot of this culture for me has been opened up by Mary Jane. I, um, I was that like asshole kid running around St. Louis and Chicago, just like popping these things, but not taking the time or honoring the, like what it can be. Yeah. I would just like do this and then go like to Taco Bell and like leave like sauce packets all over the counter, <laughs> like an asshole. You know what I mean? And so I like really need to be around someone like Mary Jane to understand like, what this can represent yeah. and what hopefully it does represent the more we can like have these conversations and get it out to the world so that the world knows i mean i guess you can call it a drug but uh i think there's bigger pictures here yeah yeah cheers thank cheers. you cheers yeah thank Wait, you so you much yep touch tips <laughs> okay oh, shit give me one more then goddamn yeah. yeah let's all touch thank tips thank you <laughs> let's all touch albino <laughs> <laughs> oh i follow my don't worry about it <laughs> salute Salute. Thank you. Um, so on that on that note, something that we get asked a lot because um, can I get into this? Dig into oh God, everything. Yes. Snack yeah. away. I'm trying to be good, but I'm listening. No, man, we got popcorn. We got carrot cake muffins. We've got a charcuterie board that we put on a rolling tray. We've got broccoli <laughs> and hummus. There's some cornichons. I'm gonna get into one of those later. Yeah, those I got those for you actually. You did? Yeah, I knew you, you know liked I love like a pickle. A, exactly. A cold crunch. Oh, Can't be beat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I I don't know how often you get asked this, but we get asked a lot when we talk about everything from Molly to mushrooms to weed to every like ketamine sometimes. Like the big question is like why? Like like there's like there's there's so much out there. Like why is this important to you? And um my answer has gotten distilled down the more I've explored it and about why why it's important to me. So I was just gonna like, if it's not too deep of a question, I was gonna ask you, like, why is this your thing? Why is this your path, do you think? Um, so I can't get into like the high level of it. I don't know. You know, I, I found a way to support myself and through it, I found a way to do good work. And then beyond that, I found a way to, you know, I, I, we, me and Mary was talking and if you, at the Emerald Cup, I, I gave a talk a little bit about, um, you know, I was in order for me to have a regular job, like a, I, so I, I community organized for a really long time, like for a check. And I loved it. I felt good about doing that shit. But I starved when I did it. And I had to take like Adderall and Ritalin to like in order to make my deadlines and get up every day. And, you know, and then the amounts would keep going up and up and up. Um, That'll grind your bones to dust, man. And your body, dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your stomach. Like, your you know, heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your, your, your teeth, all of it is not healthy. It's unsustainable. I remember having a conversation with my mom, like, dog, well, not to call my mom dog, but it was like, mom, like, I'm going to have to take this shit forever. And she's like, you got to do what you got to do. And yeah. that's the reality of it. You had to do what you got to do. But one of the, one of the larger, um, for me, benefits, just benefits, the why is that this is one small way to take, um, take money and profits out of like big pharma and get people healthier ways to heal themselves. So we could start there, um, you know, anywhere between, for me, it was ADHD. Um, some people it's like depression. Some people it's like anxiety, but like it, you can do this yourself. One person uh, with a few, little bit of spores, you know, and a small closet space can produce enough medicine in one flush for a year. You know, I mean, it, it, assuming they're not fucking 
you know, party and heavy. And if they want to do that, they can do that too safely. You know, it's, it's, it's more safe than, in my opinion, anything else. You're not smoking anything. You know, you're not being overly intoxicated in terms of like alcohol and having liver damage. The shit comes in, it goes out, doesn't last for too long. And so it's like, it's a very body friendly thing to, to just get into. Um, and then again, like there's, there's just the, the economics of it. There's right now things being decriminalized. There's ways for people to be able to support themselves and whole communities, you know, just, and, and not only through the psychedelic side of the mushroom, but like right now, the price of cordyceps and lion's mane is higher than the price of, um, magic. Really? Yeah. Wow. And going up. So like, it's just, there's, there's economics. You don't have to, every, college ain't for everybody. You know, yeah. you can plug into this, you can su sustain yourself, you can sustain a family, you can build something on it just through getting knowledge of how to move around and different skill sets. You can find something that's nourishing to you and not like plug in and, you know, tap into the matrix. Uh-huh. Yeah. Damn. You work with decriminalized nature. Is that right? Yeah, I'm a, I consider myself a, a large ally of decriminalized nature. I, um, they offered me... So I chose not to sign up officially with them mm -hmm. because I, I like having my autonomy to move and influence the conversations in terms of policy through all these different groups. So just like I work with Decriminalized Nature and Carlos Plazola and I have a very good relationship. Um, I also work with, um, well, not, yeah, I also work with uh, Dave Bronner and, uh, and New Approach, not inside of them, but like they they call me when they run things by i talk to them if like hey on this side this is what we're going to do maybe we can get some sort of synergy there and so i would say that i work with anybody who um is willing to 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 listen to what i would say i advocate for is like the legacy folks and the common folks there mm -hmm. was there was a, an initiative that just failed um and it was called the um the the psilocybin mushroom initiative and this it was crafted you know as pretty much a, a giveaway to big business it would have put my testing lab and a whole bunch of other people like me out of business mm. um by way of law and it would hand things over to people who are already bred it up and people who had a lot of money it was a move to basically legalize psilocybin yes it was in california yes and it would have fucked it up just like legalizing weed yeah fucked that up yes Right. Yes, it would have. It would have. There was no. But even so, I listened to some uh, so, to some of the stuff that y'all were doing earlier this morning, and y'all were talking about you know the carve outs that that were being that in um in cannabis the carve outs that they had for legacy or either acreage block you know you right. couldn't have over a certain amount of acres, mm -hmm. and then Newsom came in and fucking and took it out and it 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 that didn't even have any fake safeguards. Right. Like what they were putting with with the um the psilocybin mushroom initiative, it didn't even have any fake safeguards. It's just like, yo, um, and so I say all that to say that that failed because the people weren't behind it. And I think with Good. with the mushroom people looking at the way that things happen in cannabis, like we know that we have the power right now. And the minute we open that door to legalization, we lose it all. The cat's out the bag. And we're unfortunately we had to watch what the cannabis world is going through. But I feel like um I feel like we're way more active at an earlier point and we have something to like we, we cannabis bruised its knees so that maybe we can learn from those mistakes, you know? Wow. Is Preach. is the psilocybin community as robust and connected as the cannabis community? The good thing about it is yes. Awesome. Yes, yeah. but but it's I, I think that the reason is because the way that we're coming out of the closet in our respective places and they're all really small places. So, for instance, Oakland decriminalized. And then we all came up the closet. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody in Oakland knows everybody. And so it's like, you know, it's, it's easy for us to get on the same page, you know, communicate amongst each other so that we all know what's up. And we all know what's up in Oakland. And the same thing in Denver. Denver decriminalized. The people came out the closet. One of the interesting things that I what I do, the way that I can lend to um, weaving these circles together is through these events. So I've made it my business to to hold these events in places where it's decriminalized because I understand that if I come, people come. First of all, there's I it would be presumptuous and egotistical of me to assume that when I get there, there's not a community already. But what I do know is that oftentimes when I get to these places, the community is disjointed. 
and like scattered. People don't know where everybody is. Yeah. And so me coming to people's towns is a reason for people all to come together at one place. And hopefully the job of a community organizer is to organize yourself out of a job. Meaning once I come there, I don't have to stay there for the shit to work. You That's know? That's what's up. So if the my theory is coming to places where it's decriminalized. LA is the first is the first place in California where I'm doing something where it's not decriminalized, but it's hopeful because the numbers are down here, and I'm hoping that if I come down here and we we plant the flag in terms of the you know putting legacy people first, and we make sure that people are talking that way. You know, if you hear me talk about policy, it's always big, put barriers of entry to big business, ban institutional money, some wild shit. People say that shit is impossible. You can't. But they do it in Arcata. You know, there's no chain restaurants up there. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Same thing about the, my sister's hometown, Port Townsend. Just no, there's nothing right? there. There's no chains. There's no Starbucks, it's no nothing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so if you possible. can do it that way, yep. we can do it this way. They just tell you that it can't be done. Sorry. <laughs> they just tell That's you okay. that it can't be done because it. it these guys, I was, we were talking, we were having a conversation earlier today, and these big businesses in cannabis, they factor in being able to take losses for five, 10 years. Just like Starbucks did, right? And Uber. They, they move in and they put the little guy out of business. Yes. And then, and then they jack up their prices. Yes. And that's all you got. Yes. So that happened in on a huge level in California cannabis. It's ongoing. And Mary just did an awesome piece on KCRW about it. Shout out, Mary. And, uh, so that's the concern with that would have been the concern with this psychedelic mushroom initiative would have it would have just handed everything over to big Turn business. He. What it would have done was it would have classified the the mushroom, the magic mushroom, the sacred mushroom. It would have classified it and had it regulated the exact same way as a regular edible mushroom. Wow. Which in fact sets people with the with the scale and the infrastructure up or either the ability to buy into scale or buy that infrastructure sets them up for success. Yeah. It puts everybody who has been out here busting their ass, taking a rich. Come on. Most, I know a bunch of growers. I know thousands of growers and most of them. If, if this, if this initiative passed within six months, everybody will be out of a job or having to slave away for these people. It, I know this is projection on my part, but it makes me feel like they think we are dumb. And they are just greedy. And that's how I feel when I hear about that, where they're just like, nobody's going to care. We're just going to gobble it all up. They're dumb. They're busy. Fuck them. Like, that's that's how it feels to me when I, I hear you're that. Right. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I call shit. So I always say in, in terms of and I saw in terms of mushroom, there was before COVID and after COVID. Before COVID, they could serve us whatever the fuck we want or whatever the fuck they wanted because we weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. All we saw was, oh, great, legalize mushrooms without like thinking about the implications of what that means. After COVID, we've seen the, dis the, the dissolution of Northern California. We hear people like Tim Blake calling that shit uh, an extinction level event up there. You know, I was up in Humboldt the other day just at a bar grabbing a beer at a place where I used to grow go to meet fucking connections. This time I was just for once I was good. I wasn't fucking trying to buy drugs. But I was sitting there and a dude came up to me and uh he starts chatting me up and oh, he I, I'm I'm waiting for him to come around to the price. And he's like, Yeah, I got two hundred dollar pounds. Oh my god. What? Your fucking heart, right? Like Wait, that's devastating. That's, yeah. What? And so we so Wait, how much is a pound? Can we just for the context for our listeners? How much does it cost to grow a pound? Yeah, can you just do a quick breakdown? Because I that's so fucking crazy that I would just like to say like what it should be, what it used to be, and two hundred dollars now. When I was talking to some of the farmers in Mendocino to grow a pound of uh, cannabis with all of the regulations and taxes, it's about five hundred bucks to just Ugh. grow it. So to sell it for two hundred dollars, and you're out three hundred means you you yeah, it's just heartbreaking. Okay, when I was on the street buying. Up there, the lowest I'd get to like 1400 Yeah. You know? Yeah. These like, what are you fucking talking about? So, <laughs> so we have, the mushroom world has the ability, the, 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 after COVID now, we see what's happened up there. We see it. Yeah. You know, y'all turned on the lights in 2018 and, and by 2022, everybody up there is fucking broke. The cost of, the, the cost of everything is up right now, except for weed. And the price of mushrooms tanked too. Wow. So we're so we're watching that. And so what I say is there was before COVID and after COVID. After COVID, we're paying attention. 
You know, they just tried to service this shit and people wouldn't sign on. And you can't just do it with Southern California because, the, quite frankly, in terms of the mushroom world, the activist part of the mushroom world is in Northern California right now, from Santa Cruz up all the way up. You know, their people are down here, but again, they're not connected and active like that. You know, um, and so, so in, ter in terms of your original statement, yes, you're absolutely right, but it's different now. Mm. You know, we're paying, we're paying attention. I had one a person who sponsored my events um get mad at me for for saying you know fuck this shit like don't don't we need to leave this shit decriminalized as long as possible until it's right like he got mad at me and he pulled money but for me that little money that he pulls like is whatever like this is bigger than that out it as long as y'all are making money i'm gonna make money so i'm gonna keep advocating for y'all as long as i fucking can <laughs> man it is so great to talk with you about unapologetically wanting to make money as well you and how important that is. I feel like a lot of a, a lot of the time it's an either or thing. Like people feel weird for wanting to make a bag for something yeah. that they believe in or like they they want to make that bag. But it's at all at whatever it costs to make that bag. Yeah. But like you're really riding that line of balance between like I'm going to make mine, but I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to hopefully like change things for good as I make money because there's no shame in that. Yeah. In fact, it's positive. It's how it should be. Right. Um, I, I think like no, that's kind of like the beauty of America to me. We talk a lot about it where she's like Mary Jane will say like, like, I'll be like, that's why America rocks. And it's like, or it, maybe it doesn't like, you know, like, <laughs> or maybe it's broken as fuck. Maybe it's broken as fuck. <laughs> and but, yeah. but you can make money here. You can doing, following your dreams, hopefully, hopefully. And yeah. I think that's like a beautiful thing. And you can I mean, there is an opportunity to I mean, I love that you say, you know, perhaps the legal cannabis movement bruised its knees so that you know, the legalizing psychedelics movement doesn't have to be as broken. You know, yeah. it's just it's it's very heartening and um, exciting. And, and, you know, and as you crunch, <laughs> because like, you know, we're, we're vamping while you're snacking, man. And also, I feel great right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank yes. you. I got a little twinkle. My body's yes. warm. My yes. Can you see how my cheeks like won't sit down? Yes, I see that. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? yeah. My cheeks are high. Good cheekbones. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, fuck Botox. You just need like a little yeah. microdose. A microdose away. Keep right the out. needle away. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing that I love in speaking with you is how you don't, you're not trying to like other, other areas. You're not trying to be like weed is this and and like mushrooms are that. Like you're not trying to put anything in opposition of each other. You're yep. saying there's like room for all of it. But for you, like mushrooms is the game and that's where your lane is. But yep. you're not trying to also like talk shit about alcohol or talk shit about anything else. And I really appreciate you just like kind of keeping all the balls in the air and respecting everybody's choices like that. Because I've talked to some people who like the only way they can get their message across is to talk shit about other things. Some of the people in the cannabis community are some of the most judgmental motherfuckers I've ever met in my whole life. Like they're, oh, there's a lighter on the table right uh, behind the popcorn. Um, great sentence nice <laughs> but you know what i mean like uh, when i uh started working in in cannabis i was so surprised to find out two things one that a lot of people in weed are super fucking judgmental mm. and two that they're angry <laughs> mm. and everyone was like oh you know it must be the, like, the chillest job in the world and i was like this is actually the most stress i've ever been in in my whole entire life because of how upset people are all the time yeah. and how how because they've been backed into corners so much, they are spiky, they're prickly, they're judgmental, they're full of all that kind of stuff. And so it's just um, the reality that, you know, when you have to fight all the time, you're going to be pretty fucking pissed off about it. And so, you know, the the decriminalization aspect in the community organizing, allowing people to maybe feel a little bit of ease in this um, thing that you're doing, it's just, it's really fucking cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's what's up. Damn. Yes, sir. And I feel great, too. <laughs> yes! Uh, <laughs> nice. I feel younger. Hell yeah. Your cheekbones are up there, too, oh, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they feel great. My top lip feels good. The, the money thing, though, is important. You know, I, I come from, initially, I come from the commerce side of this. Yeah, I'm unashamed of that. And, like, I try to find, when I left, so the last, I worked with Color of Change, um, in 2018 but before that the last job i thought i was going to have was working with the black organizing project in oakland we worked to push police out of schools and replace them with 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 counselors which they did after i left but the whole team i hired um and but when i left there it was my i told myself that i'm going to leave politics 
because this shit is frustrating and I don't believe in it, but I'm coming back as a funder because I did believe in the power of what the funders were able to do. They make you tap dance. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to dance for the money. And I'm like, okay, cool. If I have, if I want to do these things and I know how to get them done, then I have to come back and be able to cut the check so people dance to my tune. So, like, yes, I ha I'm in the, I have a psilocybin mushroom potency testing business where we charge people. We do give people, like, if, if, if there are people who can't afford it and it's and they're doing citizen science work, we, we partner up with people. Um, in terms of the psilocybin cup, we charge people to get in. However, if people can't afford it, there are ways. There's never been anybody who's been turned down due to lack of funds. Now, we don't let everybody in um it's it's invite only but because that's we come from a street background i don't know these people out here yep and what we're doing is like you know these you know i learned they they put a snitch in fucking huey newton's crew they put a snitch in fucking martin luther king's crew they put a snitch in stoley carmichael's crew why the fuck would they you know and so i'm like yeah. nah we're, we're only dealing with people who we who we know and if you have a vouch the same as it was in the street if you have a vouch then then we'll so i say all that to say we're here to make money. But um, for instance, what we did at the Oakland Psychedelic Conference was we took on sponsors, but we made sure that, you know, our speakers, we we speakers who ordinarily couldn't pay to come to Oakland, we paid for them. We put them up. You know, we made sure that um, any, 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 nobody in Oakland paid to come to that thing at all. Nobody in Oakland paid and it sold out. Um, we made sure that any POCs in, in Oakland got tables for free. You know, and so we had sponsors that did pay to be there, but those sponsors didn't put money in my pocket directly. That's how we kind of spread it around. You know, so there, there, there's ways. I'm, I, I'm, I had a conversation the other day, and I think this is one of the beautiful things about having financial freedom in this space is these guys. I was working with these guys in Jamaica, growing, and they gave me, um, they gave me a contract. 150,000 shares of stock is what they offer me. And I'm looking at this as the first contract I ever saw, ever. And I'm like, oh, shit, 150,000 sounds like a lot. Not even preferred shares. I didn't know about that at the time, but just 150,000 of, of regular ass stock. Uh, this is like learning about points in like a music contract and in stuff. A, like they a, don't let you know all the ways. <laughs> Interesting. So I was on a micro dose, all right? And it dawned upon me within that meeting where these guys – are trying to at this point fuck me. They give me 150,000 shares. Uh something the microdose told me to say, "How much stock do y'all have?" I mean, we're right there. I'm looking them in the eye. They they can even say it and they, I said, "So how much?" One of them said, "I have 1.6 million shares." The other one says, "I have 1.7 million shares." Now, these are two white guys, neither of neither of whom know how to grow or at least neither of whom know how to grow as well as me. Uh -huh. We're working in Jamaica, an all black country where we've already been in. The people there already say they want to deal with me. And so I'm looking at this and the business is growing mushrooms. So I, what I say to them is, well, why doesn't mine look more like yours? And what they tell me is that this is the typical this is the typical contract. And so I, it, it brings me to the place where having freedom, I'm like, well, you know, I, I feel like it's only typical until we decide to do something different. <laughs> and we ended that negotiation with me having exactly the shares. I was, I, I ended up, instead of being an employee, I ended up as a partner with them. But I say all that to say, like, we try to do things different here. You know, within within Oakland Hype, we try to fucking break molds. Nobody owns us. We make all of our, we're, we're self financed and so, and, and we don't know all the fucking, the typical shit. So we are in a space where we can say, fuck it. And so that's what we're kind of doing to try to make shit a little easier for the people that we fucking know. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. God damn, man. <laughs> uh, you're just the most inspiring human being I've spoken with in a very long time. Um, for real. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Top to bottom. God damn. Oh, now you're going to smoke as, a split? As I wish wrap. I was you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as we wrap and you spark that spliff, will you tell everybody a little bit about the psychedelic conference that's happening and uh, just also where everyone can find you and everything you do? Yes. Say, thank, thank both y'all for having me here. I, I appreciate mean, it. It's an honor. Please thank come back you. all the time. Anytime. Mary, thank you for putting this together. <laughs> um, and shout out to the whole Oakland High Fate team and shout out to Oakland. Shout out to California. So all the shout outs really quickly. Um, 
on April the 23rd and 24th, we're having a two-day conference here in Los Angeles called the uh, California Psychedelic Conference. Uh, it is the bigger, better version of what we had in September called the Oakland Psychedelic Conference. Uh, at the Oakland Psychedelic Conference, people like Ed Rosenthal pulled up, Sherbinsky showed up, um, you know, Amber Center, a bunch of well-known cannabis people, but also all the best mushroom people. We had Willie Michael pull up, and we had some of the people who won another event that I, I, I do called um, the, the Psilocybin Cup. We had all the winners of the Psilocybin Cup in one room. And so y'all want to smoke this while I'm y'all good? A hundred percent. Um, and, and so again, we're going to, we're having that down here. So what I've done is anybody who has, um, who has entered into the psilocybin cup, uh, gets free admission into, um, this California psychedelic conference. So for, for a fact, we'll have some of the best mushroom cultivators, probably the biggest gathering of mushroom of, of magic mushroom cultivators in one spot. Ever. All under one cap. Right there. One cap. Yeah. How about it? How about <laughs> it? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, so that's exciting. Again, we're going to have the, the in-person um, Battle of the Agar there where some of the best um, Agar artists will be putting their work out for display. But even more importantly than that, uh, we're going to have two days of programming, everything from psychedelics and futurism to maternity and psychedelics um fuck around and find out in the bedroom uh eroticism and psychedelics awesome <laughs> uh divine master alchemy we're going to have awesome we're going to have four different grow classes from people who i actually learn from uh we're going to have a whole panel that mary's going to be um the, moderating about um the the psilocybin cup winner so i mean it's just going to be an overall plant medicine celebration but specifically very, very, very mushroom heavy with a uh, with a range of offerings for for pretty much any any and everybody. Um, one of the best things about being in my space is it's not those talks though. What I tell people is one of the best things about being in a space is being in the fucking space. People, there's not one person has been to any of my things who uh, has not who has not benefited both financially and in terms of their network. And I'm willing to stand on that. You know, every single person that walks through those doors that has the, the, the balls to say hi to the person next to them benefits. Yeah. Fuck yes. That's amazing. And this is just the beginning. We hope so. This is just the beginning. Yeah. We're, I've been doing events for less than a year. Um, so Holy far. shit. Really? Yeah. We started wow. the last one on Mother's Day last year. Where can everyone find information about this? CaliforniaPsychedelicConference.com is the landing page. Uh, if you type in Eventbrite, California Psychedelic Conference is there. Um, tickets will sell fast. Also, Oakland underscore hyphen. There's this. There's a fake page out there. Fucking block them, report them. You got uh, it. Oakland underscore hyphen. And that's on IG? IG. Amazing. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Open door. Please this come is, back. Thank Yo, you. This was fun. I like this is probably this is my first this is my first in person podcast interview ever. Really? Yeah. So Man, it's good. Thank you so much. Thank you for like making the trek and for the gift and for sharing that awesome spliff with us. Mm -hmm. This has been so fucking great. Uh and you can find us on the astral plane uh anytime. <laughs> We're very available. So just, you know, meet us there. Or you can follow us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. WG at weedandgrub.com is our email. Uh, leave a five star review on Spotify or iTunes. Leave, leave a five star review for the first for the first podcast you ever saw where all every, where everybody on it was on fucking mushrooms at the same time. <laughs> five star review. <laughs> I gotta go after that. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>